page level security in Power BI. Now you might be wondering, what in the world am I talking about here? But let me tell you, this is something that we could do. Now you might have heard of row level security, you might have heard of object level security, both of which are not what we're doing here, which is page level security. Now, you Uyghur are going to use row level security to make page level security work, but this is more of a hack than anything, just to, for full clarity's sake here. So we're not actually going to be implementing this new newfangled technology called page level security. We're gonna get a little creative and use row level security to limit and restrict the pages that our users can access. Now there's a huge caveat and an asterisk that's important on this that you must know about that we'll talk about at the end. So make sure you watch it till the end because there's something a really important concept that goes along with this. But all that being said, let's check out an example. So let's take a look at Power BI desktop here. So I currently have a Power BI desktop stood up. There are a few different uh, pieces that I wanna point out here. As you can see on the right side of the screen, I just have a few different tables, you know, very basic stuff here. I have an employee table, a date table, a product table, and a fact table, all right? And we're really only referencing a couple of pieces here just for the purposes of this demonstration. Uh, we're essentially just going to be looking at the employee table and uh, the product table. That's it really. So let's kind of take a cursory glance of what exactly we got going on here. So the first thing I wanna point out is a the employee table. As you can see here, the employee table just has a list of employees that are in email addresses as well, some colors. Now, when I'm doing this based off of colors, this is for example purposes that's easy to understand and easy to see. But what have I, I've essentially done is I've created a table here that uh, has a list of colors that each one of these users is gonna have access to. Now, there is one note on here that's called colloquially PW Demo. That's so I could show you guys kind of an example how it's working. Uh, in the real world, so to speak, once we actually log it into uh, the Power BI service and check it out from there. But here, like I said, we have, uh, you know, which pages someone is going to have access to, and in this case, each page is part of a color. So just to kind of give you an example of what that looks like. So the, there, there is a black page, a blue page, a red page, silver, and yellow. And according to this, I want my, for instance, PW Demo should only see red, black, and silver. Nick Lee should only see black. Manuel should only see silver. Mitchell could see silver and yellow, so on and so forth here, right? So there are a mix of uh, assigned colors and pages that each one of these employees has access to. And we could also see here, if I look at the model view, I currently do have this related using a many-to-many -many relationship from employee table to product, specifically for this type of interaction uh, to get it to work as I intend here. Now I do have the directionality as a single direction, filtering employee, from the employee to the product table. Now this is just a best practice here. You should avoid bi-directional relationships at all costs whenever you can, all right? Because we don't want some data ambiguity happening here as discussed in some of my previous videos. And let's go back to our table view. And then our product table is quite simple. It is just a product table that has a list of all of our products. And in here are a list of all of the colors that exist. And so what I actually have on the report view in these individual pages is just the count of how many colors there are, how many products exist for each color. Now, again, this is very rudimentary for the purposes of this video. But anyways, so now that I have the colors that I want, the pages that I want, well, how does this work? So essentially, what I've designed is a, such a way where you could choose a specific color here, and now single selection is turned on because currently uh, I recommend using single select for this uh, type of functionality because you can't navigate to multiple pages simultaneously. So this is literally just a slicer visual, as you can see. It is a slicer visual with the color field from the employee table that I have on here to do page navigation based on uh, based on that and it's going to be able to filter down the product table and then I also have this which is a button what this button is if I look at the action section it is a page navigation button and the destination is currently using a function I hit the little function button here to add a function and what the function button I added is in here if I zoom this out a little bit 
you can actually see this function is simply grab the selected value of whatever is chosen in the slicer and then that is the name of the page that i want to navigate to all right so if i look at the destination section of this button in the action i have it set to field value and page selection so that's all i've done now and now if i have a black chosen and i click on go to selected page it goes to the black page if I have blue chosen and I go to the selected page, it goes to the blue page, so on and so forth. And it works for all the different colors. So now that I have it set up to navigate like this, now I need to implement row level security. So what I could do in the row level security section is I could go to modeling, so something I haven't done yet is actually created a role to use this for row level security purposes. So let's do that real quick. So in the modeling tab at the top, I can go to the manage roles button to create a role. I'm going to make a new role and let's call this page level security. And then I want to base this off of the employee table. So I'm going to hit new in the employee table where the email equals something. And that something is, I'm actually going to switch this to DAX editor. So it's easier to see here where the email equals the user principal name. So user principal name is a function that we use quite often when it comes to row level security purposes. We have several different row level security videos that you can actually check out on our YouTube channel that uses, utilizes this function all the time. So definitely check that out. But now if I have it set row level security to email is this specific username, whoever signed in in the Power BI service, then it's going to filter down the valid pages that exist. So now it's showing black through black, blue, red, yellow, and silver. But if this security level is implemented uh, at the, in the Power BI service, then whoever signed in will only see the available pages that I've designated that they're allowed to see. All right, so now this is all set up uh, and now all I have to do is publish this to the cloud, grant access to specific users in row level security, and then when those users access this report, this is gonna work just as intended. So let me go ahead and publish this out. So I'm gonna put this in my test NIC workspace for the purposes of testing. Select. Now let's open it up and see what it looks like. All right, so this is what it looks like for me. And of course I can click on a page, I can click on blue, go to the blue page. I can click on red, go to the red page, so on and so forth here, right? Now I'm the report developer, this is my report, I own this, so on and so forth here. Now I just need to implement this row level security. I can restrict access to the pages of which someone can navigate to. So now if I go to my test workspace and go to my page level security report, go to security, I need to assign someone to this role. And just for this example, I'm going to assign uh, a, the PW demo, the Pragmatic Works demo account uh, to this role. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to pull up a uh, incognito page of this user. All right, so here it is. So as you can see, I am currently signed in in here as my Pragmatic Works demo account and Pragmatic Works demo only has access to black, red and silver. And I could quickly double check that in Power BI. If I look at my employee table, Pragmatic Work Demo, as you can see here, only has access to red, black, and silver, which means that role level security is currently working. Now, this is all fantastic. If I go back to my report, black, red, silver, now Pragmatic Works Demo can only see black, red, and silver. So if I click back, it could go to the black. And notice, Pragmatic Works Demo only has access to black, red, and silver, so it's also implementing role level security on the contents within this page, which is awesome. I could go to the red page, and I could go to the silver page and all of those work and I can't access all those other pages. So this is awesome. It's a great way to implement what uh, I like to call page level security. So you can restrict the access on which pages someone can navigate to. Now, again, this is a bit of a hack, right? We're using row level security in a way that's not necessarily intended to be able to do this page navigation. But in the end of the day, it's working fantastic and my users are completely restricted and can only ever access the pages that I grant them access to in row level security, right?
Wrong, that is incorrect, all right? This is an important aspect, guys. So while this user, this Pragmaticworks demo user, can only ever access the pages that I have uh, granted to them in real level security by hitting this go to selected page, while that's true, hypothetically speaking, this is not true security, all right? This is not 100% true security. Let's talk about that for a second. All right, so now, the reason why this is not true security because I've restricted access to the individual pages based on this slicer that's on this page right now. So what that means is if I go to one of these pages, notice at the top, the URL at the top change, changes. So it says report slash 97A, 067DA, blah, 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 all the way to the end, right? And if I go back to another page and go to the black page, that value changes okay now it's different at the top the url is different so hypothetically speaking if i look at and see who has access to what notice that mitchell has access to silver and yellow and pw demo has access to red black and silver so if i go in here if i am pw demo and i go to the red page and i copy this url that's at the top of the screen and i send it to mitchell pearson who also has access to this report but he can only do that page navigation to those specific pages he can actually access this red page because i've granted him i've given him the url to essentially circumvent this page of a security i've added all right so this is important thing to realize it is not 100 percent true page level security if someone copies this url then and share it with someone else that also has access to the report they can also get to this page now here's where the next step comes in so i'm going to be releasing another video on this topic to kind of expand upon this but essentially what we could do we could also use in tandem what's called object level security to restrict the contents of those individual pages so for the vast majority of scenarios where we can actually get our users to navigate pages just as intended, just like this, majority of the time this page level security is going to work, but sometimes you know you don't want to have the capability of someone to accidentally circumvent this page level security navigation. And if they do, what do we do about it? All right, and that's where that object level security comes in on our next video. Now, if you wanna know more about row level security uh, in general, uh, our Power BI intermediate class on our on-demand learning platform uh, from Pragmaticworks does go into a lot more depth on row level security as well as several of our other YouTube videos. But, you know, there's also the YouTube video that is called Learn with the Nerds Data Modeling Edition. Uh, this one is awesome for general data modeling tips. You know, we talked about using this many-to-many -many relationship and we have a single direction filter going on between the employee table and product that's also going to give you a lot more really cool information if you are curious about how the data model functions but anyways guys uh, that pretty much wraps it up my name is Nick Lee from pragmatic works and just let me know down in the comments do you know of any really cool situations that you could use something like page level security you know give me your ideas you know how can I make this better what can I do to make this an even cooler example let me know and I'll see if I can include that in this next video all right guys well that's all for today and I hope you enjoy <laughs>